morning, everyone. Hello, Demonica. How you doing? Is that bacon? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she had to make it all in the screen. <laughs> it's breakfast time, right? <laughs> oh, my God. It's late, she but yes. The, she got the bacon up in her face with tissue like this. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well put some eggs on that plate. Uh, get some eggs. Where the eggs at? Oh, see, you getting it in? Oh yes. Okay, I she see you. She getting it in. She got the blueberries. You know what I mean? Those are blueberry yeah. pancakes. <laughs> no, that's uh, wheat bread and okay. some um, egg whites. Okay, okay, good, 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 good. And good, some Greek good. yogurt and a little bit of granola. So I'm trying, I need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, darling. <laughs> you way over that bacon, you might as well pass us some of that bacon. I wish we could like zoom some bacon to each other. I want some turkey bacon. <laughs> and on there, turkey bacon in about two years. I need me some turkey bacon right now. <laughs> How you doing, darling? I'm great. How are you doing? Yeah. How are y'all doing? Good. Uh, fantastic, Good. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm excited fantastic. about this. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad you all um, decided to take advantage of this opportunity. I'm excited about it also. So, mm -hmm. um, hey, Karen, everyone say hello to Karen. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. I'm finishing Thank my cold you. pizza for breakfast. Good morning, Karen. <laughs> oh, you eating pizza? Oh, my God. Y'all are killing me. We're in the nutrition webinar. Y'all eat turkey bacon and cold pizza. <laughs> What's wrong with turkey bacon? Well, we, we, I mean, uh, we went to Demolic and got the phone. No joking. <laughs> no, 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 I was going to say, because that's all I eat is turkey bacon. I don't do pork <laughs> or beef. I need to good. hear it so I can do right. Yeah. It's all good. It's all good. You know, it's, it's, it's levels of right. We're not going to say anything wrong. You're not going to say anything wrong. You're right. Levels of rice. Right. So I right. need to hear what's level right. This turkey bacon is not good. <laughs> yes, levels of good. There's no such thing as wrong in this world. <laughs> hey, the day of morning. <laughs> the day of morning, exactly. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. <laughs> Everyone say hello to Dr. Ken Red Cross. He's on now. Hey, everybody. Good morning, Dr. Dr. Ken Red Cross. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Morning. Good. 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 You guys are hearing me okay, right? Yes. 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 Okay. All right. Good. 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 That's better. <clears throat> hey, Karen. Well, we want to thank everyone for coming out this um, logging on this morning, you know, for participating and taking this opportunity. So I know a lot of people had a lot of questions about nutrition. My original plan for this was to have a series of nutritional talks um, for members. I, I get a lot of phone calls. And emails about nutrition. Even though we do have most of our nutrition, nutritional guidance on the website, people have questions that that uh, might want to you know, tailor made everything to their to their lifestyle and to their plan. So um, I want to start having more monthly nutritional talks, um, educational guidelines, just kind of you know guided one based on what your goals are, whether it is to reduce body fat, uh, build more muscle, um, uh, become a better athlete things of that nature. But then Karen gave us an opportunity to bring on Dr. Red Cross to do a nice little talk on nutrition science and the importance of vitamin D uh, based on his campaign that he's working on right now called Get On My Level. So without further ado, we're going to actually have Dr. Ken. He's going to come on and do the first portion of this uh, presentation where he'll be here to give us more information about his campaign, uh, possibly answer some questions. And then from there, for the second half, I'll be available to just add my portion and answer a lot of your questions that you have specifically to your uh, weight management plan, okay? So I'm actually gonna put a spotlight on you, Ken, and then actually we're gonna have you um, unmute your mic for us, Ken. Better, Clarence, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can hear you now. All right, good, good. Well, look, Clarence, thanks for having me on. And, and let me tell you guys, I'm probably the most excited person on here today to talk to my fitness folks um because this is my life so clarence thanks for having me on and karen thanks for sharing what i do with them so look everyone one of the the bigger stories that's out there now is is vitamin d and we're hearing that so much more now because we are learning about the coronavirus and some things that have affected you know everyone obviously but definitely the african-american and latino communities more than anything 
you know, one of the things to keep in mind is that when you think about this vitamin D deficiency story, it said that over a billion people in the world are actually vitamin D deficient. But now if you kind of dial back and we see what's going on with the coronavirus, let's look at the disease states. So the CDC talks about some disease states that some of us may be dealing with or somebody close to us may be dealing with. So we're talking about heart disease, lung disease, diabetes, and obesity. Now, when you dive into those, those are the disease states that's really been affecting the population, especially African-Americans. But if you kind of peel back the layer a little bit more, all of those disease states are associated with low vitamin D. And then you look at the group that has the lowest vitamin D in the United States, which tends to be African-Americans at the tune of about 80% of us are actually deficient in vitamin D. You start to kind of do a little more research and say, you know, is there something here that says that vitamin D can make a, this really a big difference in our health? And the answer to that is absolutely. Now, as we talk about it, we can't say that vitamin D is a treatment for the coronavirus. That's not the point. But we know that vitamin D is incredibly important for our immune system. Absolutely. To the point to where you have to think that when you're talking about vitamin D in our body, vitamin D affects 36 organs in our body. There's a vitamin D receptor on almost every cell in our bodies. And so when you think about that, it kind of lets you think that the good Lord put it there for a reason, put the vitamin D kind of story there for a reason. You know, the other reason why I was so excited when Karen came to me to share this is that vitamin D, it's really a blessing if you really think about it, because this is a vitamin that the sun hits our skin and we actually create a vitamin from our bodies, which really vitamin D is a little more than a vitamin. It's a pro-hormone when you really think about that. Now, the challenge in our community, black and brown communities in particular, is the melanin in our skin. So the melanin in our skin is protective for certain things, but it's also a protective against us getting the vitamin D conversion that we need to get the biggest benefits. And then you pair that with the fact that it's not that easy to get vitamin D in our diets, everyone, because vitamin D is not particularly natural in them. People will bring up cream cheese or milk and so forth, but they're fortified with vitamin D, meaning vitamin D has actually been added to them. So I get natural vitamin D different ways. I, I love, I'm a big sardine fan because you can actually uh, get it that way through the fatty fish livers and fatty fish. But once again, it's not something that's sustainable each and every day. So as, so as Karen was mentioning before, I'm sorry, Clarence, you mentioned, I decided that I wanted to create something that was special, that was gonna issue a challenge. And the good thing is you guys are all my fitness folks, so you all know about challenges. And so this big challenge was really to, as I say, get on my level, which is my vitamin D level. Now people will say, well, doc, that's good. I understand vitamin D is important, but what is that level? And so the important level is between 40 and 60. Those are the levels that we know where a lot of the magic with vitamin D takes place. And so that's why I tell everyone, you have to get on my level to really get those benefits. But I want it to be a challenge, just like with us and fitness enthusiasts, but I want it to also be a challenge with family members and in the community, because we have to focus and understand that our health matters as well. And we wanna make sure that we're focusing on all of those sort of things and kind of the magic of vitamin D. The other thing I'm excited about with vitamin D is that it's easy to get tested. You can get it tested whether you go to your doctor's office. There's a website, powerofd.org, where Karen and I work through a lot together to where you can get a, a, an at-home test kit you can order. So there's no excuse not to know what your levels are. And it's that important. It's that important in this day and age. I was even more excited, guys, because uh, last week I was just, I go through these um, kind of seminars just to stay on top of all this stuff. And Dr. Fauci was mentioning two supplements that he takes. He takes vitamin C, which I do as well, but I was even more elated to hear him say vitamin D, which once again lets me know, you know, we're on to something. And I want to make sure I disseminate that to all of you as well. Now, to bring the vitamin D story to something else that affects all of us, look, there's some good data on vitamin D and lean muscle mass as well, which is why I take 10,000 units a day. My level is 65, just so you guys know, because like I said, this is a challenge. I hope some of you reach out to me on social media and try to beat me or get into that range um, to make sure. 
Um, but the point is, is that I recognize a difference as far as in my performance and in my sports um, nutrition kind of regimen that I have, which is a kind of a crazy regimen, um, but it's different and unique. And so as we're talking about vitamin D just for overall health guys with some very serious disease states, it's something else that can kind of help us for those leisure activities that we enjoy, like working out and, and exercising as well. I'm sorry, Clarence. I couldn't hear My you. My apology, Ken. My That's apology, right. Ken. I didn't realize you were finished, actually. So, yeah. Um, so, is that is that that is? is do you want to answer some questions for a few people? Or I do, I do. But one more thing, guys, before the questions. I'm sorry, Clarence. I thought you were talking. I didn't want to cut you off. So the other thing that's important too, everyone, is as we talk about this vitamin D story, it's based in science. And that's what we need to do when we're dealing with the coronavirus, right? It doesn't matter what side of the aisle anyone is on, we're going to go with science here. And when we look at the science, vitamin D has had good stories to show that the studies will show that it's important for lung function. The stories will show that if your levels are optimal, it decreases your risk for colds and flus. It'll also show that vitamin D levels when they're optimal helps with insulin sensitivity, which obviously is with diabetics. And we know vitamin D may have a role in helping with weight management. So these are all things that are studies and are built in and through the science. These things are not new. It's just that right now, because of the coronavirus and the healthcare disparities that we're seeing, everyone, it's just kind of having a big light shown all over it at this point. So that I just wanted to, to add as well, Clarence. Classic. So, Ken, I'm going to take the spotlight off you for a second. Okay. And uh, so everyone can see each other. If everyone can actually put your screens back on gallery mode again, that would be great. You can actually see everyone. And then we will allow you to ask some questions. Sure. So um, someone's mic. Hold on a second, everyone. Elizabeth just came on. I'm going to mute your mic. Okay, there we go. So, hold on a second. Someone keeps unmuting. I don't, everyone want to make sure that you all keep your mute mics muted. Just got to put your screen on gallery mode. Only person that should be unmuted right now is Dr. Red Cross. Dr. I'm going to call you Ken, Ken, because it's getting hard calling you Doc, Dr. Red Cross. <laughs> um, <clears throat> unmute your mic for me, Ken, if you can. So, right. uh, okay, great. So what, what actually, um, what level do you recommend? Cause I know I spoke to Karen about this before and mm -hmm. she, she gave our class some information on what level, and when you said level in terms of how many units they should be taking for vitamin D supplementation, what are your, what are your suggestions? Yeah. You know, as I talk to patients about that, I usually always talk about 5,000 units. And the reason why I said 5,000 international units, everyone, is that that is the one that when you look at the studies tends to get you in that sweet spot between the 40 and 60, actually. It was 5,000 international units. And I mentioned the testing only because it's kind of important to know what levels you are. You know, we have the flu coming up in only a few short weeks. And so I usually make sure that patients are checking their vitamin D level every six months because there's that beginning of the year. And then we're getting in the flu season. I want to make sure that our immune systems are robust and ready to go. And so I tend to find 5,000 units tends to be the best spot. But sometimes you check it, Clarence, and you see that somebody is 19 and their levels are all the way low at 19. And you need to boost them up with the other vitamin D, which is vitamin D2. The one we're talking about when we say which one over the counter, everyone, that's vitamin D3. And that's the one that we get. Vitamin D2 is with the prescription from the doc to boost your levels up. Okay, okay, great, 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 great. Does anyone have any uh, questions at all? Does any, um, anyone have any questions, raise your hands? You know, there, there was a uh, raise your hand button here at the bottom, but for some reason I don't see it on the screen now. Um, I had a question, I had a question yes. but I'm grateful that he actually answered it, because I was, you know, I, I do know that, <clears throat> I think it's recommended is 600 IUs, which I felt like was just oh, it's not no. significant enough, but I'm grateful. <laughs> Well, thankful for um, clarifying that you said 5,000 I use at least. But does the body, um, you know, how, like vitamin C, the body will get rid of what it doesn't need at the end of the day or something like that. Does vitamin D does do the same? 
All right, so the your body excrete what it doesn't need. No, that's a good question. Number one, let me let me mention that first thing you were talking about, Delmonica, when you said that 600 units, nowhere near enough um, at all. And in fact, that's even some of the units they talk about for children to take. So you're right, not enough there. Second question, you know, vitamin D is interesting because vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So since it's fat soluble, it kind of holds on a little bit longer. So that's another good thing. Um, the other thing I love about vitamin D is that it's hard to overdo or overdose on vitamin D, okay? Because your body does some very special things. Number one, obviously, if someone gets a whole bottle <laughs> and takes it and there's an issue or a problem there, that obviously is not normal. But as far as getting in a level where you think it's too, too high, your body will shift it into an inactive state. And actually, it would also darken your skin a little bit so that you're not getting it from the sun's rays that's also kind of jumping on board as well. So that way, it's good that 5,000 units tends to be, once again, the sweet spot. But as all of you, we're on here now. We're all going to check our levels and know where we are at this point. Great, great, great. What is the, uh, hold on, what is the actual um, website you mentioned for checking levels again? Yeah, so the website is thepowerofd.org. And, you know, it's actually more comprehensive than even, you know, ordering a test kit, everybody. You can order your test kit there. Um, and when you get your test kit, it's just like a, a finger stick for anybody who uh, may be dealing with diabetes or has a loved one, of course. It's just a finger prick. You put a couple of drops of blood on there. It's a card. You send the card back and you get your results. But after you get the results, there's a little calculator on there, which I love because you'll get your number, let's say it's 29, 30. You'll put that number in and it'll spit out a calculation as to how much vitamin D you should be taking as well. So, you know, it's one of these, and then there's tons of information on there about vitamin D as well. So it's a very comprehensive site actually than just to see how you can order a test kit. Wonderful, wonderful. Who else question. has any questions? Go ahead. I do. So you talked about um, the vitamin D2, which is the prescription type, and yes, then the vitamin D3 is over the counter. Yes, so yes, in sir. order to boost you, so for example, if you go to the over the counter, you buy the over the counter. Yeah. Um, you said that even if, if you take more, then um, you won't, in a sense, be overdosed. So I'm thinking if I can't get to my doctor to get a, a prescription for vitamin D2, if I buy <laughs> vitamin D3, in the mm -hmm. interim, and I take two or three a day, I should be okay. Am I, is my thinking correct? Well, the only thing, and that's a good question again, I don't want a shooting at a moving target. And I think that's the big key because, you know, we can't kind of be in a little silo and say, you know, I can't get to the doctor. So this says 5,000 units, so I'm going to take four or five. No, doesn't work that way. We want to be, we want to be careful there. And then let me go back to say, look, Vitamin D, as I'm just mentioning here, it's not easy to necessarily get as much toxicity unless, you know, we start going a little overboard. I had another a colleague of mine whose mom, she's Caucasian now, but when she checked her vitamin D level, she was taking it because she knew how healthy it was, but her vitamin D was, uh, um, was 100. Um, and so we don't want to live in those realms that high necessarily. So that's why it's still important to make sure that you actually get a test at some point so you can see where you live, where your vitamin D level is. Because lots of times when you get that low, you're not going to even be able to get enough D3 because see that D2 is very long acting. The D2 is one pill a week and it's 50,000 units. And so it's hard to catch up to that and so forth. So you just don't want to kind of be shooting at a moving target. You want to kind of get there and get laser focused. Remember, you're sitting at the. You're I have a quick question. Um, do we have, are there any plant-based vitamin D or is just regular just vitamin D? Oh gosh, that's another great question. Oh, I love these questions. So it's not necessarily a plant-based per se, but I'll tell you. I mean, there are some sources. It, it's not easy. But that's why I mentioned before, like, I'm a big sardine fan. You know, this lets everyone on this thing today understand that grandma is always right. Because a lot of you remember back in the day where grandma used to run at you with cod liver oil. I know my grandma mm. did. Um, did And so <laughs> that cod liver oil, she's a genius. Because really, it was about that vitamin D, guys, and the fatty fish livers. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's a good way to get that natural vitamin D. But yeah, as far as any other any other way to get it naturally, it's really going to be through our diet, which is the way I think we should all be thinking about whole foods anyway. At least that's what the way I eat as well. And I'm sure Clarence is all over that. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. So you were saying, um, so you think actually, so cod liver oil is actually a good source? Excellent. Source. Vitamin D? Phenomenal source. Phenomenal. I can still take cod liver oil. Yeah, every day. Good. I've been taking it since a kid. Yeah. Yeah, and see, and oh, that's good. Goodness. So it'll be interesting to see, Delmonica, what your levels are. It'll be interesting if you're doing the cod liver oil each and every day. You, were low. you still low? Yeah, see? <laughs> low. And, and, see? And, and with me taking 10,000 units, everyone, like I said, mine recently, as last week, was I think it was 65. I have to look at it. But even with 10,000 units, I'm still only 65. Um, and so you're right. There's that little bit. But then again, that cod liver oil is about more than just vitamin D as well. It's also about omega-3. Very important for your, for your heart health, your eye health, your brain health. You know, as a, as a quick side note, this is interesting. So um, some weeks ago, actually a couple of months ago, everyone, I had like a little swelling under my, my eyelid that was bothering me. It felt like maybe it was a little sty or something coming. So I went to the eye doctor. So I went to the eye doctor because I needed to get my contacts anyway. So they went there and I was like, look, I, I don't do meds and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm going to put some warm compresses. You know what he told me I should use? He was like, you ever heard of fish oil? And I was like, what does this Western medicine doc know anything about fish oil, right? Because I'm, I'm a, so guys, I'm a Western medicine doc. I trained in Columbia here in New York, but in a sense, I've seen the light and know that there's alternative ways of healing. And so I was like, what is this Western medicine doc talking about? So he was telling me about taking fish oil because there were some studies that showed that it helped with styes. That, that fish oil in and of itself for inflammation and that sort of thing. And so it's nice as anecdotally to share that because, you know, that story comes out of where vitamin D is now looking at uh, being looked at as medicinal. And now we're talking about omega-3 in this instance, which can also be tested on a test kit on that um, powerofd.org website. It has some of the cards are just vitamin D. Some of them are vitamin D with fish oil. And some of them are vitamin D with fish oil and magnesium, which is another incredibly important, especially for us fitness wise, um, to make sure we know the story about magnesium too. Kim, I want to I want to just um, go back a little bit to the level thing and and tell people that you can also go and ask your doctor. Like if you've had blood work and done in the last yep. year or two, you can ask your doctor. If they tell you that your vitamin D level is fine, push because <clears throat> it's not their fault. But the Institutes of Medicine made a mathematical error when they were um, doing the data analysis for the standard dosage, which is not worth even repeating, and what your level should be. So they think, uh, they've been told that that 20 range is sufficient. And all the data, especially all the new COVID data, even data that I sent Ken yesterday, yep. is coming back saying that those, those levels are totally insufficient when it comes to protecting you from an immune system perspective. But it's, again, it's not their fault. <clears throat> so they don't know that the 40 to 60 is where you really need to be and they kind of max out. Um, at 55, it's like, great, Ken's yeah. higher. I'm at 98. I'm the perfect example of somebody who just took 10,000 because that's what I take in the winter. And when COVID hit, I'm like, I'm sticking with it. And if I hadn't known by testing that my level was 98, I'd still be taking 10,000 I use. And it'd probably be way over 100 at this point, which kind of leads me to my next question of you, Ken, is, you know, we tend to think that these vitamins all, you know, operate separately in our bodies. But I'm pretty convinced that the reason mine was so high is because I take so much magnesium. And yeah. we know that those two interplay. Could you talk about how they you know, how fish oil and magnesium sure. and work together. That's Wally. Oh, hello, Walt. All right. So look, guys. So one of the things that I'll, I'll go back to one, one little thing as far as what Karen was saying, as far as they don't know. And you're wondering, well, how does the whole doctor association not know? You know, they got those numbers really around 20 and 30. And they were only doing that, guys, for bone health and rickets back in the day. They were okay as far as for rickets and bone health, but now we have a different story of the immune system. So that's why that's not enough. What Karen's mentioning with magnesium, magnesium is a, it's a, it's a, such a beautiful interplay with vitamin D. Magnesium is needed for so, so many things. Magnesium is needed for calcium and potassium to get to our bodies to do what it's supposed to do. Magnesium relaxes everyone. You know, think about this. Magnesium is necessary for the heartbeat. How many of us out there exercise and understand what our heartbeat feels like? I, heard, I think somebody was actually exercising when they were um, on the video just now. 
But the point mm -hmm. is, is that the magnesium is important because you have a heartbeat 100,000 times a day. And magnesium is necessary for that. And so it's important to bring that in because you, know, you need to have cofactors whenever you have vitamin D in your formula, guys. And those cofactors like magnesium are incredibly important. I don't know how many of you ever heard of ATP. And a lot of us back in the day, yeah, some of us took science back in the day. And, and ATP, everyone, it's a molecule. It's the energy molecule that we all use to exercise and get throughout the day. It starts at AMP, ADP, and that third one makes it ATP, and then it's active. That's, once again, a magnesium story. The other thing I love about magnesium that's important with that interplay with vitamin D, both of them help with sleep. Magnesium is so important. In fact, I had an article I read, I think it was a British article, some probably a couple of years ago, but I'll never forget the title. It called Magnesium, the original chill pill. And when it said that, I mean, look, I'm an 80s kid, so I remember when they used to say that sort of stuff. But the chill pill is exactly what magnesium is. It allows you to relax. And so that magnesium with that interplay of vitamin D together, look, they work synergistically. The omega-3 as well. Look, those are three that are just staples of my, of my regimen um, already. But you actually feel them. You feel them in your performance. And even there were some studies. There were studies that were done. There were two studies. One study showed that it was something that was going to be helpful as far as for your mood, talking about vitamin D in particular. And it makes sense when you actually look even deeper into research, everyone, because look, there's vitamin D receptors on the brain. And why would they be there if there wasn't a function um, for vitamin D to be there? So that was interesting. There was also another study out of Canada. And this was a study done on women who were actually African-American women who were either overweight or obese, which are different kind of categories, everyone. And there was a benefit in, in weight loss as well. Once again, you can't say vitamin D is something that's going to help you lose all these pounds. But once again, it's supportive. And I think the benefits, they build and they build. Um, and so, and like I said, that's why magnesium is a great interplay, especially for cardiovascular health, our blood vessels, which we need the relaxation, right? Because when our blood vessels constrict, blood pressure goes up. And that's what we don't want to have happen. And that's where the coronavirus has been wreaking havoc um, in our community, especially where we already deal with a little more hypertension than most. And then the COVID virus gets in to that receptor that once again clamps our blood pressure. And then all bets are off for us after that. So Dr. Ken, you talk about magnesium being a relaxer and helps yeah. us to sleep. So then is it your recommendation that if we take magnesium, we take it later on in the day as opposed to taking early in the morning? Because I take a multivitamin yep. and I take my multivitamin every morning. Mm -hmm. So then the recommendation would be then take the magnesium later. So that will help us to relax and go to sleep better. Absolutely. And I'll tell you two things along that. So absolutely. I take my magnesium at night as well because of that relaxing benefit that you get. The other thing that's so challenging here in the States, guys, it's hard to get enough magnesium in a multivitamin um, because magnesium is bulky. And because it's bulky, as I talk to drug manufacturers and supplement manufacturers, I should say, they say, look, it's tough. That's even why when you look at the magnesiums that are over the counter or some of the companies I work with is magnesium, it's usually two or three pills because it's hard to get in there. But when they give you a multi, all you got to say from these big companies is say, oh, yeah, there's some magnesium in there. And that's enough. It doesn't mean it's necessarily the active form. And the other thing that's a challenge with magnesium is absorption. Um, so you want to get a good magnesium. I like magnesium bisglycinate in particular. Um, and I mentioned that one because that's one where you get good bioavailability and absorption. Because why take something if it's not being absorbed and doing what it's supposed to do? Um, so yes, magnesium at nighttime is the best way to do it. Um, and then once again, look at that multi, because you'll see when you get the magnesium kind of on its own, you know, it's not the same dosage and so forth. So just keep that in mind. What are some good uh, food sources for um, yeah. magnesium? Yeah, so magnesium tends to be things that, you know, that I, I typically like that are good for our heart health, nuts, seeds that sort of thing, but it's not necessarily in everybody's diet. You'll always hear a, a joke, you know, you can also get magnesium out of mung beans and everybody says, what the heck are those? Um, mm -hmm. So that just kind of gets back to the source of that. It is not that easy to necessarily get as much. Um, I'm a seed and nut lover as far as, you know, cashews and things for my training. But once again, we typically are pretty deficient as a, as a, as a country 
um, in magnesium and so forth. So it's still something that probably is a good idea to, to, to supplement. So if we're looking at 5,000 um, units on the vitamin D, what are your recommendations for magnesium? Magnesium kind of depends, again, on the formulation, a little bit of a, of a moving target, right? You know, when we were in okay. training, they talk about magnesium oxide. That was 200. You'll see some that are 220. The main importance now with the vitamin D is to get a nice whole vitamin D. I mentioned places like, depending on where you guys are, or you guys are in Maryland, but um, I was going to say Sprouts or, or Whole Foods or some of those places where they've kind of been pre-vetted. Um, and then when you're there, you'll know you'll be able to say, okay, these are some good sources that are vetted. And so that targets a little different, Clarence, depending on the formulation of mag you get or the magnesium okay. formulation. Okay. Okay. So, Dr. Ken, um, yes. so I am allergic to just about all nuts that there is on yeah, the planet. See? Yeah. Yeah. So then my, my, to get my, my magnesium, that would be something that I have to purchase to take because I can't get it naturally. No, no, you can't. And, and you're right. And you know, you're not much different than a lot of other people, right? Where that nut allergy is something that's really hit us hard. Not to mention that there's other ways, other things that we do that kind of undermine our magnesium, such as, you know, you have a tummy ache or you have a diuretic that you take, or you're a coffee fan. When you have a tummy ache, you take something like calcium to help relax your stomach. That binds magnesium, that lowers it. You have a coffee in the morning if you're a coffee fan. Well, it's a diuretic. You lose magnesium that way. So you start to recognize like, gosh, you know, I'm losing it. I'm not necessarily able to get it in my diet. So that's when you understand, yeah, magnesium is one of those other things that you kind of want to add to your, to your daily regimen. Does anyone else have any other questions? Hey, Ken, I'm, I'm going to like raise a question that everybody has and nobody wants to talk about unless they're talking okay. about six okay. in the morning, which is um, the pooping issue for women. Yeah. Just got to say, ladies, I hear it all the time. And the magnesium, there are so many different kinds of magnesium and some people really can't tolerate some of the magnesiums that cause loose stools. Could you just get a little deeper on the magnesium types for us? So yeah, everyone. So look, I, obviously that's something that's maybe tough to talk about. The good thing is I can't see most of you, only a few. Um, so we're all good. No worries. Um, we all have those challenges. But I'll tell you this, that gets back once again to that magnesium. And that one that I mentioned was that magnesium bisglycinate, everyone, it was buffered, meaning that it's kind of, it's kind of protected in a bit so that when we do take it into our gut, it doesn't cause um, some of those issues that can be common with that. And so, and that's something as well that I talk a lot about being able to talk to your doctor about as well, guys, because um, you want to make sure that you have that relationship, because I like to say a doctor should feel like a member of your family. Um, and when you're able to feel that way, you can talk about things like poop and, and, and how to manage it and what's going on and so forth. But it's a big part of that story as well. Fantastic. Do you want to have Go ahead. I'm sorry. What, so what were the amounts of how much vitamin D should you be having on a normal basis? I hear like 10,000, then I hear 5,000. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. So 5,000 is the number as we're talking about it, Ashley. 5,000 is that number where I tend to find it's a sweet spot for most of us to be between the 40 and the 60. I just mentioned you heard 10,000 because when I was taking 5,000, Ashley, it wasn't enough. And so I was still around 30. So when I started to take the 10,000 units daily, that was just, that was my sweet spot there. Uh, but I also got a test done as well. I got a test done at my doctor and I got a test done at the, at the powerofd.org to see. Um, and I realized I wasn't taking enough in the beginning. And 10,000 is just the one that works for me. But for everybody out there listening and watching, a good thing to do, let's get our levels tested. The other thing to do is to recognize that 5,000 <coughs> is something that'll be different for you. Because as you talk to friends, you'll say, oh, I'm taking 1,000, I'm taking 2,000. But every time I had patients taking that, guys, it was never enough. It was never enough. So that's why I say 5,000 is what I typically see is um, kind of that perfect zone to get us in. And that's something like daily, like a pill? Or it is. You okay. It is, it is. And, and I'll also mention this, Ashley, as well. So look, guys, I don't know if you had a chance to look me up or what have you before, but as I mentioned, I'm Western trained but my whole goal, and you'll hear me on any show I do, or most of them I'll mention, my whole goal is not to pull out my prescription pad. 
So even though it's a pill or a capsule, Ashley, I am one who tries to avoid all of those. But as we're talking about the vitamin D story, we're recognizing that we're not getting it out of the out of our diet. We can't go outside when you have brown skin and get as much. Second of all, a lot of us are working inside now. A lot of us are cooped up. So even if we were going out there and we're going to get out there and get some sun for two, three hours, the studies will show you may get 10,000 units, but it's not enough every day. And so it's one of those things, actually, that that does require some sort of supplementation in this case. But I'm not a big sort of pill popper and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not, I, yeah, I didn't want to seem to think that I was saying that. I was just oh, saying no. like yeah. over the I can go over the counter and I should be able to see like and just to buy it at, like I guess you said a Whole Foods or something and find the right would it just be vitamin D or is it that fish oil that you were talking about? Yep, yep. That's separate as well. Look, I have some sources that I work with where I you know where I, I know they're vetted. I, I know the people who deal and run the companies and, and I know they're on top of it and the science is there. So I can share some at, at another point through Clarence. However, um, with a couple of companies that I work with who I know were on top of it. Um, but yeah, no, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that as pill popping that you were saying that. I just wanted everyone to know, because, you know, people, especially a lot of my patients, you know, they know, they're like, dog, I don't want another pill. I don't want another pill. So I get it as well. So that's the only reason why I mentioned it. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay, anyone? Any questions from anyone else um, about this? Nothing at all. I just want to tell everybody that they need to go and follow Ken on either Facebook or Instagram and spread this message because this is my job now. Um, we created this campaign, Get On My Level, because we know that African Americans are so much more susceptible and are dying at such a higher rate from COVID. And what we're walking into for the fall and winter could be worse than what we've ever seen. And if you guys can share it to as many people as you can and get the word out, that's that is the whole reason that we're doing this. It's just, it's easy, it's cheap, really inexpensive. There's no real difference between the quality of vitamin D3 to vitamin D3. And it's the easiest thing you can do for your health, that of your family and all of your loved ones. Yeah, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll piggyback on that, Karen, just one last thing. So as we talk about the numbers of how the coronavirus is affecting a lot of our communities, brown and black communities in particular, don't forget about our children as well. You know, we're figuring it out. I did a show yesterday just talking about going back to school and how much anxiety and angst that's causing. And we have to think about our situations, honestly. We have to think about our situations as we tend to be more communal in how we live. Look, I have two 90-year-old parents that live with me. Um, and so that's communal. And then I have a set of twins who are going to school and I have to decide, is that good for them and for this household? And it may not be. And so I mentioned that, guys, because I want you to think about your particular situation as well. If you guys have children and you're figuring that all out, the coming and the going, we have to look at it a little bit differently because we're at a different risk at this point. Um, and the risk isn't because it's a genetic problem in African-Americans. The risk is exposure. It's the exposure because we're in such close quarters. You know, you look at some of the studies, the studies will show that only 20% of African-Americans can telecommute which gets back to letting us know, guess who's on the front lines in this fight? Guess who's still going to work because we got to keep the lights on or, or keep food coming in and that sort of thing. It may not be all of us necessarily, but just a story for us to keep in mind with all the rest of our folks around this world, or this United States, I should say in particular. Um, in particular. So it's important to just think about that, to think about what's happening. As Karen mentioned, the flu season's coming. I am a, an internal optimist, guys. And so what I am hoping is that we've never done more social distancing, mask wearing, and hand washing ever before any flu season. And the studies show that down in Australia, so when the flu comes, it sweeps through Australia, up through Asia, and over to us. That's why we're able to kind of predict it each and every year. The studies show that it looks as if it was pretty mild this year in Australia. And so let's hope that continues. But we're not going to be, you know, caught flat-footed. We're going to be ready. We're going to we're going to check our vitamin D levels. And I was joking, challenge all you guys to get on my level um, of vitamin D and just continue to make sure to recognize that our health matters and that we're going to stay on top of it. 
Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you very much, Doctor. Really appreciate Thank it. Let's you, give man. a hand, everyone. Thank you, guys. I'm sorry I couldn't get a workout in with you guys today, but I'm, I'm going to try when we get off. Yes, please do. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you, Ken. All right, Thank have you a so blessed day, guys. Be well. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you, Doc. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Somebody, Thank somebody you. had a question? Okay. No, we said Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, kids. So everyone, I'm going to stay on board for this portion. I'm going to meet everybody's mic again. Strong arm. Somebody's, somebody's, somebody's. Uh, yeah. I got him. I got him. Somebody was having a wonderful conversation. <laughs> okay, team. So I'm just going to um, say thank you, everyone, for staying on board. And uh, that was some great information that uh, Ken gave us, which was fantastic. So, um, you know, the number one goal that, you know, the question I get from a lot of people is, uh, Clarence, how do I eat properly to, um, you know, get into a better, better position for weight? And what happens for a lot of people is that they tend to follow these fad diets or if they're trying to lose a lot of weight, lose weight, they tend to not eat at all, starve themselves, uh, trying to actually lose body weight, things of that nature. And what typically tends to happen is that most people that lose weight end up losing a lot of muscle instead of actually losing fat. Um, people tend to try and take stimulants to increase the energy. Um, there's a lot of things that are just not sustainable to help you to get into your ideal physique. So what I always go back to is I, I ask people is that if you had a child and that child was an athlete, what would you do for them to help them to perform better? You know, the same thing that applies to our children that are athletes, it actually applies to us. But even more so, the older we get, the less room we have for error. We, we can't make those same mistakes. You know, a lot, of, a lot of things we try to do is stay up late at night, get up early in the morning, try to perform at a high level, and you can't do it. You know, stimulating your body with caffeine, starving your body in the morning going out exercising without anything in your body, not going the whole day without eating. Um, you can't do those things. Even when it comes to intermittent fasting, as well as intermittent fasting uh, appears to work to lose weight, what most people are doing, you're actually losing muscle and you're actually losing a lot of energy and you're throwing your metabolism off. So there's a lot of misinformation out there that um, people are following that is not adequate for you to perform at your highest level, help you to you know, prevent disease, help you to have high energy, help you to gain lean muscle and reduce body fat at the same time. So I wanted to go through a few quick things with you real fast. I wanna recommend a couple of books for you, videos, things like that, and then answer some of your questions. So what I always recommend for people is that, you know, you always wanna follow a training program that, that like an athlete, don't focus so much on losing body fat just focus on performing at your highest level. And the most important thing you can do for good health, from my perspective, one of the things that have helped me, I'm, I'm a, I'll be 50 this year, and I feel amazing. You know, one of the things I, I do is I always try to do is I don't get as much as, as lately because of this homeschooling thing is throwing me off completely, um, is sleep. The most important thing you can do for yourself is sleep. If you want to reduce your body fat and build lean muscle, the most important number one thing you can do is sleep, all right? So whatever you're doing, if you're getting only six hours of sleep, you want to try to get an hour or two extra of sleep into your, into your lifestyle. That's the most important thing is, is sleep. Even if you got to take naps in the middle of the day, I'm going to mute somebody again. Maria, you keep unmuting your mic on us, Maria. It's actually sleep. So sleep, then it comes down to nutrition. It comes down to timing of your meals. Uh, it comes down to make sure that you're having balanced meals throughout the day. Um, all, those, all those various components. So before I go too far into this, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go too much into detail right away. I want to ask some more of your questions in, uh, at first. Is I want you all to look at the. Uh, there's a book that you can read by Jackie Warner. I recommend this quite a few times. It's actually on the website, on the lifestyle page of the website. It's, it's a funny title. But it's, it is what it is. It's, it's, this is why you're fat and how to get thin forever. Now, not talk, it doesn't talk about you know, a person being obese or anything, like, anything of that nature. It's about why we tend to hold on to too much body fat, wherever your level is. This is why you're fat 
and How to Get Thin Forever. It's written by Jackie Warner. Okay, I highly recommend that book for you. It's tremendous. It's a, it's a lifestyle change for you. It's one of the best books I've ever read. And I've read over four or 500 books on fitness and nutrition. It's the best book I've ever read in 26 years in the fitness industry. Um, you'll be able to glean so much valuable information from that book. It'll completely change everything for you. I guarantee you. So you, the main thing it's going to talk to you about is about getting your hormones, you're working properly, getting your body functioning properly. And as I said before, the most important thing is sleep. It's trying to do everything you can to get as much sleep as you possibly can, because that's when your body starts to regulate everything. It starts to get your hormones working properly. It helps your body to release growth hormone, which is critical when it comes to weight management, fat reduction, muscle building, things of that nature. Okay. So sleep is number one. The nutrition program for a person that actually, that really wants to actually lose fat and gain muscle is actually essentially the same. It's really the same. It's really no different in terms of what you're eating and things of that nature. It's more so about, you know, the person who wants to gain, because back it up, the person who's actually eating in a healthy way, eating, you know, meal timing, eating often, every three to four hours, balanced meals, eating a, a, a nutritarian type of a diet, taking in high amounts of fruits and vegetables. For me, I eat more fruit than an average person. A lot of people tell you to stay away from fruit. I don't do that. I eat about four servings of food a day, sometimes five. Um, I eat lots of vegetables, you know, three to four servings of vegetables a day. I eat about two salads a day, mostly fruits, vegetables, um, beans, as Dr. Kyrie Cross said, uh, nuts and seeds, intact whole grains, and just a moderate amount of protein. You know, the, the fitness industry has a tendency, well, animal protein for me. I'm not a vegetarian because I love meat, but I can't eat as much of it because we all know it's not good for you. It's not good for your heart, but I'm addicted to eating. Not addicted. I'm accustomed to eating it. Um, but it's not really that good for you. The fitness industry has a tendency to have us eat way more protein than what we should. And it's really not good for your kidneys. It's not good for your heart. It's not good for you. To be honest, most animal protein I want to be straight up with you is not good for you at all. You know, we are accustomed to eating it. And we have grown accustomed to eating it, but it's really not good for us. So most of our diet should consist of plant-based foods, as Dr. Red Cross said. Fruits, vegetables, um, legumes, which are your beans, things of that nature, uh, seeds, nuts, and intact whole grains. Now, when I say intact whole grains, I'm speaking more about uh, sprouted whole wheat, something like Ezekiel bread or um, you know, uh, uh, still cut oatmeal, things of that nature. Not the ground up wheat flour, wheat bread that we buy in the store. Only thing that's really doing is that your body's assimilating it similar to taking in candy, things of that nature. So let's start off first. First thing is that you want to get the proper sleep in. When you wake up in the morning, it's really important that you actually eat first thing in the morning before you all come out and exercise. When you wake up, your body's in a fasted state. The body's at a state where it's, it's in a fasted state. The metabolism is running super slow. Um, and you go out and exercise. Your body's going to tap into something as a source of energy. Your body actually burns carbohydrates within the first four hours after you eat. So when you wake up in the morning, your body has no carbohydrates. A lot of people think that when you wake up in the morning, their body's going to tap into fat as a source of energy. And that's not true. Your body actually burns fat throughout the entire day. It's fat is a very slow-burning source of energy. So your body doesn't really use fat too much when you exercise. Even with that whole fat burning range theory that they came out with, um, they really came out with that for cardiovascular machines. That was really more of a marketing ploy that they gave us. That's not true. Your body actually burns fat throughout the entire day. That's a, more of something that you know happens when, you're, when you have a lot of lean muscle and exercising, things of that nature. So um, it's really important that you eat in the morning, particularly some fruit, because if your body doesn't, if your body doesn't have any carbs, and it doesn't tap into fat, what is it going to use for energy? Protein, right? Your body's going to tap into protein, pull that protein from your your bones and your muscles, to actually use it to exercise, and which is the, what you don't want to do. You actually want your body to actually use protein for tissue repair to help you to maintain lean muscle. So think about it, if you had a kid that was actually going out saying playing AAU, basketball or football, would you go have them play, play that game 
without eating? Would you do that? I would do that, would you? No, you wouldn't, exactly. You, we are no different. We have to make sure that we feed our system. Now, the good thing is that if you do eat, not a big breakfast, just a pre-workout meal and an after-workout meal. If you, if you eat, preferably some fruit, high water content fruit is ideal. If you have some fruit first thing in the morning, you're actually gonna find that you can perform better, a lot better in the morning when you go exercise. You perform a lot better. And, when you, and if you do that, you're gonna actually burn more calories throughout that workout than you would if you didn't eat. And you're actually gonna actually uh, stimulate your body in a way, especially if you're doing weight training, you're gonna stimulate your body in a way that's gonna allow you to actually gain more muscle later on than if you did not eat on a regular basis first thing in the morning. But then what happens with that also is that it wakes your metabolism up. That's the key because if your metabolism is running slow, your body thinks that it's not gonna eat for a long period of time. And what happens with that is that it is everything that you do eat, instead of actually retaining that food and using it for muscle building, is slowing down and is using that food as a source of energy. I'm sorry, it's, using that, it's storing that food as fat instead of actually using it for tissue repair. So you want your body to take everything that you're eating and use it for muscle building and, and exercise and not necessarily storing it as a source as for fat. So I always give people the analogy if, a, if you had a fireplace. If you had a fireplace and you wanted to get a nice little fire going in your fireplace, right? You got a fire in there. And I take this big chunk of wood and I throw that, fire, that wood into the fireplace. The first thing you're gonna notice is that the fire is gonna dim down to the point where the fire is gonna completely go out. And then at the end, you're gonna have this big chunk of wood left over in the fireplace. And that's what happens when you eat this big meal and don't eat again. A lot of times people have a tendency to eat this huge breakfast or this big lunch, especially lunch. I notice it more so for lunch more than anything else. They eat lunch around 12, one o'clock, and they don't eat again until about eight or nine. The only thing they might have in the middle is some m and or some potato chips or something like that, some popcorn they may have sitting at the day. I know I caught some of you, I know, I know. <laughs> so you snacking on this sugar, and the reason why your body's craving like that is because your body's craving carbohydrates and food. That's why you have cravings, because you don't have enough nutrients, micronutrients and macronutrients, you don't, you're not getting enough, and your body's craving these uh, nutrients that you're not getting throughout the entire day. So going back to that, if you eat this big old meal and you don't eat again for a long period of time, your body metabolism slows down and it uses everything else that you do eat throughout the rest of the day as a source of fat. It stores it as fat instead of using it as energy. But if I take that same big piece of wood and I chop it up in those small little pieces and I'm constantly feeding the fireplace on a, on a, on a schedule throughout the day, it's actually gonna burn all that wood up. It's gonna burn nice and bright. I'm gonna have this big, nice, huge, hot fire. And at the end, all of the wood would, would have been used all of it, to the point where you actually could even add some more wood. And that's what happens with the body. If you chop up your meals and you eat in a specific type of way, your body will use that food as a source of energy so that you have tons of energy throughout the entire, entire day, that you're not having these laws, you know, you're going in sleepy and your body's using it for tissue repair so that you're building more lean muscle as opposed to your body maintaining and holding on to that food as a source of fat, right? That's critical to get your hormones to working properly. And that's very important that you do that, actually, that you start your day within that first hour. So if you're waking up at 5 o'clock, coming to the 6 o'clock class, you need to be having a piece of fruit, all right? You don't have to wake up super early in the morning to have fruit. Your body assimilates fruit within the first 20 minutes. So technically, you can actually have that fruit on your, while you're driving in your car coming to class. That's very important, all right? Very, very important. If you have some fruit, you want to add some to it, have some nuts to go with it, you know? My body, I don't, I don't really like having too many nuts first thing in the morning and when, I, when I wake up. I like to have fruit. That's my number one thing I have, right? But then within the first hour, you have to wake up. You have to eat within the first hour. For, wake up in the morning, have about two cups of water. Let me back that up too. Water is critical, ladies and, and gentlemen. Water. Now, you got to have that water. But at least they tell you about half your body weight in ounces of water. And that's true. They're not even including what you should be having when you're exercising. So when you wake up in the morning, you have two cups of water have a piece of fruit on, in your car when you're coming to class or when you're working out in the mornings or the evening, have a piece of fruit All right, within, the, within the first hour. If you're not exercising, have either a piece of fruit or have your breakfast. And I'm gonna go through, go through with you what I recommend for breakfast as opposed to the standard American diet or the standard American fitness diet. So it's slightly, slightly a little different, different there. And then you also have a nutritarian type of a diet, which is a person who takes in a tremendous amount 
of nutrients, focusing on micronutrients as opposed to macronutrients. Um, so with that, if you exercise in the morning, you want to have a, a before workout meal and an after workout meal. That's very important. So when you, within the first hour, when you wake up, and within the first hour after you exercise. But after you start eating, every three to four hours, you have to make sure that you're having a small meal or a snack, not a large meal, a small meal or a snack. Because when you go beyond four hours, your metabolism goes right into that dip where it doesn't, it starts to think that you're not eating again. So you want to stay around three hours, four hours max, even if you're not even having, even if you're not having a scenario meal. Let's say you have a job that, you know, you have a crazy schedule, you're in the court all day long, or, you know, you're in the hospital, you're in the clinic, whatever it is and you're busy, you gotta make sure you bring your things with you, you know? I don't care how disciplined you are. You can be the most disciplined person in the world. If you get hungry, you're gonna eat anything that you see in front of you, anything and everything. So you always gotta make sure you bring your things with you. So whenever I'm out, and I don't work in corporate America anymore, so I'm, always, I'm usually working from home, but whenever I'm out, I always leave my house with a cooler, always. I always leave my house with a cooler. I got three, four pieces of fruit in there, my little baggies of nuts. Uh, I have my celery, you know, I'm putting my little peanut butter in my little cup, things like that. I always bring my things with me. So wherever I am, I can always make sure I eat on a schedule, all right? And don't go based on how you feel. A lot of times I hear a lot of people say to me, I don't feel hungry, you know, I don't feel this. You can't go based on how you feel. You have to eat on a schedule, all right? You don't go to work based on how you feel, right? If you felt like you would never go to work, right? You would never go to work. So always go based on a schedule. So you have to eat within the first hour. And throughout the day, I'm gonna go through the meals with you real, real briefly. Throughout the day, you wanna make sure you have about three servings, about three servings of protein, whether you're vegetarian or, or, or non-vegetarian. Non three servings of protein, three servings of intact whole grains, or healthy carbs, three servings of vegetables, at least two servings of healthy fruit, I, or at least two servings of fruit, not healthy fruit, two servings of fruit. You don't wanna have no more than two servings of, of um, tropical fruit. Tropical fruits are your bananas, your pineapples, things like that. Those have a very high glycemic index. So your body has a tendency to spike your insulin levels when you're having too much foods that have too much sugar, but you still can have more than two servings of fruit, but no more than two servings of tropical fruit. So, and two servings of healthy fat. All right, three servings of protein, three servings of vegetables, three servings of intact whole grains or healthy carbs, two servings of healthy fat, and two serve, at least two servings of fruit, okay? So what does that look like? So in the mornings, you wake up, have your fruit in the morning before class, wake that metabolism up. You gotta get that metabolism going. After class, let's say we finish class at seven, you need to have something to eat by eight o'clock, you know? Let's say you can't have breakfast till nine. That's a good time for you to have yourself a nice little healthy protein shake. So a lot of members do is they'll bring their shake with them to class. You pre-make it in the morning. You make, make a nice little smoothie, you know, make a nice little smoothie, have yourself some, some low sugar added almond milk, spinach, a nice big handful of spinach, lots of frozen fruit, throw you some healthy protein powder in there. So be careful with a lot of those protein powders. I'm not a big advocate of supplements myself protein type supplements because I know what they put in those things and they're not what they say they are. But if you go to Whole Foods, you can get some natural plant-based supplements, protein powder like spirulina, uh, things of that nature, uh, wheatgrass. They have a nice green-based protein shakes, which I think are better than a lot of the metrics, uh, fitness brands that you find in some of these stores like GNC. I, would, I highly recommend, don't mess with GNC. As Dr. Craig Rick Cross was saying before, stay away from GNC. All right, so go to some of your healthier, healthier stores, get your nice little protein shake. Have that first thing in the morning after, after class, or you can have your protein shake before class and then have your fruits and your nuts after class in the car, you know, if you can't eat again by eight o'clock. Then let's say, let's go out and have, if you have your protein shake around, say between seven and eight, you know again that you need to have a snack again by 11, 11 o'clock or have a nice little meal by 12, if you're using that as your, as your meal. But if you're having a shake, you can't, um, there's no such thing as a meal replacement. You can't, re you can't replace a vitamin for a meal. And that's where a lot of people make a mistake that too, is that they think that the protein powder is the food. 
And really the protein powder is a vitamin. That's all it is. It's a vitamin no different than vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin C. You have to make sure that you can't replace food with a vitamin. It's only a supplement to the food. So have your shake in the morning if you know you, that you can't eat a regular breakfast by eight o'clock. If you have class from six to seven or 6.45, or something like that, you gotta eat within that first hour. Have yourself a pre-made protein shake or you can have some fruit or you got some celery or something like something of that nature, you know, or you can also have uh, some Ezekiel bread. Raise your hand. Who, who, who uh, knows what Ezekiel bread is? Yeah, you all eat Ezekiel bread? Okay. Ezekiel bread is sprouted whole grain, sprouted whole wheat. It's intact whole wheat. Um, it's not like regular bread that you find at your regular stores. It doesn't have any, um, um, imp- a lot of impurities and things of that nature in it. So the shelf life, the preservatives, it doesn't have a lot of preser- any preservatives, actually. It doesn't last long at all. So uh, it has natural preservatives. So if you go to Trader Joe's, you'll find it in the regular bread aisle, but the, the expiration date was, in, was within a couple of days. So you have to freeze it. If you go to Safeway or something of that nature and buy it, you're going to usually find it in the frozen food section. Okay? So you want to keep it frozen. I like the uh, cinnamon raisin Ezekiel bread. Give me a little bit of sugar. I'll toast it up, put some peanut butter on there. I have um, some bananas on it, things of that nature. You know, sweeten it up, give me a little healthy fat. That's one of my go-tos I normally have in the middle of the day. But if I'm rushing and I can't have a meal and I haven't made a shake, I'll make one in the morning for breakfast. That'll be my meal. So the food doesn't recognize what you're eating throughout the entire day in terms of what's breakfast and what, what's dinner. That doesn't, the body doesn't really recognize that as well. Well, let me back it up. It does a sense when it comes to fasting or the benefits of fasting. But you, if you want to have an intact whole grain, that's a good way to have a nice little intact whole grain in the mornings. So I typically like, like to have, if I'm not going through like a, um, a fasting type of a, a eating plan, I will have an oatmeal with some almond milk uh, for me, boiled egg whites for me. Um, but you can also have Ezekiel bread, peanut butter. Um, you can have some scrambled egg whites with spinach, things of that nature. But make sure you have that breakfast. But if you have your breakfast around 8 o'clock, it's really critical that you eat again within three to four hours. So what happens a lot of times that when people don't really understand how important this is, it's critical. If you want to reduce body fat and build muscle, you have to make sure that you eat every three to four hours. You can't go long periods of time. Once you go beyond that four hours, I, I swear it never, it never fails. Once you go beyond that four hours, your body completely our body, thanks a lot. Your body completely starts to slow down. Your metabolism slows down. So every three to four hours. So first thing in the morning, you have to eat. Right after class in the mornings, you have to eat again within the first hour. Every three to four hours after that, okay? Every three to four hours after that. So for me, it's like pre-workout meal or pre-class meal, after-class snack or breakfast. I usually have a snack right in the car when I'm driving home, some piece of fruit. And I'll have breakfast around 8.30, which is typically for me a lot of oatmeal. Or I, for me, I do a lot of fruit in the morning. I do a ton of high water content fruit so that I'm, I'm, when I go through my cleansing phase. So from time to time, I like to go through a cleansing phase in the mornings where I'm eating mostly just fruit throughout the day until lunchtime. Then I have a salad, things like that. But even when I'm doing that, I'm still following the same protocol. So some oatmeal in the morning, Ezekiel bread, something of that nature, some protein. If you don't have whole grains, you can have your protein with your spinach, things of that nature. If you're not eating lunch again until one o'clock, then you want to have maybe another snack in the middle of the day. You know, that's when you make sure you bring your snack with you. And throw the M&Ms away, ladies. So you can't have the M&Ms and the kiss, the kid Hershey kisses and um, and all those things in the house. You gotta throw those away. So if you have them in your house, I guarantee you're gonna eat them. You know, I don't even buy it anymore for my son. My son loves snacks. I can't even buy it, you know, and I love snacks. We love chocolate. So, you know, I'm an ice cream addict. I love me some Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> so um, we can't even buy it. So we'll go out, but don't get me wrong. If you eat clean throughout the week, you still can enjoy some snacks on weekends. If you're eating in a healthy way throughout the week and training properly, you don't have to deprive yourself completely. You still can have snacks. But if you have them sitting in your house, I can guarantee you, you're going to tear those things up completely, all right? All right, so look, let's stay away from the, the turkey bacon too, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> so I know y'all love turkey bacon. You gotta, gotta, gotta minimize that thing. You gotta minimize it. So breakfast, snack, 
lunch. If you have your lunch around 12, 1 o'clock, around 3 or 4 o'clock, that's when it's important to eat again. And that's where a lot of people have a tendency to mess up at. It's right there, that middle of the day. You know, they snacking on chips, snacking on whatever your coworker has in the office, uh, trying to take coffee again to stimulate you. Uh, green tea, which has its benefits, but too much green tea or too much caffeine in general will hurt you, you know. And you're trying to make up for a lack of sleep. But what you really need is, number one, sleep and also more food. You need to eat. And you can't, you can't make up with food and stimulants what you're not getting with sleep. It doesn't work. If you're tired, go sit in your car and take a 20-minute nap. Close your eyes for 20 minutes. It's really important that you do that. It, it'll do wonders for you. You don't want to do too much caffeine because caffeine makes you think that you're full and, you, and you, it makes you not want to eat. You have to eat. Around 3 or 4 o'clock, have another snack, and then dinner. All right? So your lunches and your dinner should be very similar to each other. A nice whole, a nice protein, a healthy carb, and vegetables. What are the healthy carbs? Sweet potatoes, quinoa, still cut oatmeal, um, brown rice, black rice, red rice, and beans. Tons and tons of beans. You got to have those beans, you know, uh, to keep you from having the intestinal issues from beans. You always want to make sure you soak them overnight. You know, I, I love navy beans, so I'm a big navy bean soup guy, you know. Um, you got to have your beans, your black beans, red beans, things like things of that nature. Um, make sure that you're having that, you know, as much beans as you possibly can. Nuts, healthy fats as nuts. Be careful with too many oils. We have a tendency to try and use olive oil, way too much olive oil. Olive oil has its benefits, but when you do too much olive oil, it can be detrimental for you, you know. So if I was you, I would try to cook more so with, you know, with steam your food more so with light amounts of water as opposed to trying to use a lot of oil and frying a lot of your foods and way too, way, using way too much olive oil and things of that nature. If you're looking for healthy fats, go with the avocados, your nuts, the fish oils, things of that nature. So your lunches and your dinners should be very similar. You know? And what happens also, let me go back to carbohydrates. Um, I know many of us, particularly women, have a tendency to want to stay away from carbs. You, know, you can stay away from the bad carbs, like white bread, white flour or wheat flour, um, the pastas and the pastries and things of that nature. But you need those carbs, those healthy carbs in your diet to flush that protein into your muscle and you'll find that you perform a lot better. So think about, you want to think more like an athlete, right? If you are going out there performing, you're going out there working out and you, you're playing a sport, you would never restrict your carbohydrates. That's the main thing that you would have in your, in your eating plan are your carbs because your carbs are your healthy source of energy, right? If you think you're doing well now with exercising, imagine if you start adding, you can only imagine what would happen if you start adding more healthy carbs into your, into your plant. So your sweet potatoes, your whole grains, things of that nature, what will happen is that you're, you're training a lot harder in class. You'll feel like you have so much more energy. And by doing that, you'll burn a tremendous amount more calories when you're exercising and you'll build more muscle. And as you start to build more lean muscle, not bulky muscle, this lean toned muscle, you'll actually start burning more fat. So I'd rather see you burn, I'd rather see you build 10 pounds of fat, lose 10 pounds of muscle. You'll still weigh the same, but you'll be about two sizes smaller. You understand? Because, a, you know, a five pounds of a muscle looks like it looks like this, you know, five pounds of fat looks like that. It's the same amount, but the amount of space it takes up is a huge difference. And that's what carbohydrates can do for you. A lot of times we have a tendency to think that we should take in more protein. Protein is good for tissue repair, but your body can only healthily metabolize protein with so much, animal-based protein. But if you take it in healthy carbs... Your body will use that more, especially if you're training. Your body will use that more for muscle building, for muscle building. So this eating plan that I'm going through with you, not to go through too much detail right now, the eating plan that I'm going through with you, it's the same whether you're eating to lose fat or eating to gain muscle. It's essentially the same. Only difference is that the person who wants to gain more muscle is going to increase their caloric intake by 150 to 300 calories per day. 
the person who's actually looking to lose fat is going to decrease their caloric intake by 150 to 300 calories per day. Now, the sweet thing about this is that if you're eating healthy, if you're eating foods that are high in, in vitamins and minerals and water and phytochemicals, you don't actually really have to count calories if you're looking to lose fat. You don't have to count because your body's going to stop eating at a certain point. You're gonna, your body is not going to allow you to eat but so much. You can't overeat if you're eating high nutrition. The reason why people have a tendency to overeat is because we're eating foods that are dead in nutrition, dead foods. And that's why we have a tendency to overeat. You know? And then if you want to gain more muscle and perform better, that's when you have to make sure that you're eating like, eating like an athlete and not eating. Don't focus so much on losing weight. Focus more on eating to be healthy, eating to prevent disease, eating to have a lot more energy. And if you do that, you'll find that the fat automatically starts to fall off. It's going to start to fall off. And then as you say, okay, you know what, Clarence, I want to start building more muscle on my legs. I want to build a little bit more muscle. I want to actually, you know, I got down to a really nice size. My body fat percentage is at 16% body fat. I want to start picking up more. I said, okay, let's start adding some more weights to your training. Let's start increasing your caloric intake by 150 to 300 calories per day. Still eating in that same format that we talked about. But now I just want to make sure that now we do just want to increase it a little bit more in certain areas to get you to a certain point of where you want to be. And then maybe add, say, another day of, of heavy leg training in the gym or something like that. Okay? So there's a lot more detail in there. There's a lot more detail in there that we can go over. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and allow you all to ask, ask some questions uh, that you may have. So if you have any questions, please feel free to just unmute your mic and let me know what you got. Clarence, I have a question for you. It's Brandy. Um, we spoke last week and you went in detail about the carb cycling and um, the meal plan that's on your website, which I am following. Okay. And um, one of my concerns as I go into week two of creating a meal plan is that I don't want to be bored with the food. So I tried to mix things up a little bit, but still maintaining the same, keeping your, your proteins in there, your healthy fat and your carbs. The, mm -hmm. the issue that I am trying to avoid is trying to figure out when I switch from those high carb days to those low carb days, how many carbs should I be adding or decreasing to still hit my macros? Because I've, I've done them the calculator. I know what my numbers should be. Um, but I, I don't want to get to a point where I'm eating too many carbs in a day. Understand. Understand. So is there so, a certain number of grams or is it just food items? So like adding your apple, adding your sweet potato, adding Ezekiel bread to meals to kind of um, make those numbers. Okay. That's actually a good question, Brains. Thank you for asking. So first, let me say this. Uh, the carb cycling, but I need to tweak that a little bit. I need to tweak it because the meal plan was put together by one of our great trainers in the past. His name is Ramsey. Ramsey is a phenomenal trainer. Um, but carb cycling is, was more so meant for fitness competitors, people who had a, a great grasp on nutrition and eating properly. So what I'm going to recommend for people in the beginning is instead of focusing so much on the cycling side of it, in and out, just focus on being consistent with the eating plan. Focus on just being having a consistent eating plan so you don't have to necessarily have to focus on so much on the cycling aspect of it. Just be okay. consistent. Just be consistent with it. So um, that's the most important thing. And then as you start to read that book that I recommended for you, then you will start to understand, okay, I need to take in some of this, take out some of that based on how you feel. But if you're eating, as I mentioned before, if you're eating foods that are really high in micronutrients, all your vitamins, your minerals, all your phytochemicals. Your body's going to allow you to eat but so much. So prime example. You know, so when I eat, you know, I eat lots of fresh fruit. I eat in the mornings. I have my oatmeal. I'll make a half a cup of, um, uh, of oatmeal. And, then, and really, that'll be enough for myself, my wife, and my son. And I'm adding the bananas in there. I got the blueberries in, the almond milk. We still have oatmeal left over sometimes because I can only eat but so much oatmeal. You know, I can only eat but so much of So for me, I like to just eat to just I'm full. You know, if I'm eating every three to four hours, my body can eat only eat but so much. 
and I'm a lot bigger than most of you all. I mean, I'm 240 pounds. You know, I'm at 13, 12% body fat right now. So I can only eat but so much. Um, so just focus on right now, just learning how to eat just to be healthy. Okay. You don't have to even worry about that, say, the, the, the mouse as much. You know, if you eat to be healthy, eat on a schedule. First hour when you work out, every three to four hours, meal, snack, meal, snack, and maybe even a late night meal if you have to, if you're still hungry. Um, yeah, I had to do that last night. I got yeah, exactly. very hungry last night after yeah. my sixth meal, and I went for an apple, a half an apple, exactly. and Ezekiel bread, and felt full enough to go to sleep. Exactly. So it's, exactly. I do feel better. I feel less bloated even after just one week. I'm happy you said that about um, just stop eating when you're full because I've been hyper focused on making sure I'm making numbers. And sometimes I can't get through all of the chicken, even though it's just four or five ounces. I, I feel myself just wanting to finish the vegetables on the plate versus exactly. the, the protein. But I'm kind of like, oh, my body really needs the protein. I should really be eating this protein, but I'm full. Exactly. exactly. So I'm happy to know it's okay to just stop eating. Yeah, you don't have to stop. You have to stop yourself. So just eat until you're full. Eat on the schedule. Make sure that you're getting in, you know, like I said before, you try to get in three proteins, three healthy carbs, three servings of um, vegetables, two servings of healthy fruit. Not healthy fruit, two servings of fruit, that is two servings of healthy fat, two servings of healthy fat. A lot of times we take in, you know, fat from bad sources, but we're not getting in the fat, the healthy fat, you know, that we actually need. And if you do that, your body's going to cut you off. And then on top of that, if you're eating, you know, uh, vegetables, you know, all your different colors of variety of vegetables, lots of greens and kale and, you know, collards and, and, and things of that nature, your, your body's going to cut you off. Your body can only take it in but so much. You know, take them so much. And then as you start to expend more, as you start to exercise more, your body's going to want more. But it's really important that you all make sure that you're eating on a schedule because if you're not, your body's going to have cravings. You're going to start having a lot of cravings. And that's where cravings come from. Cravings come, come from not having all of your proper nutrients that you need in your body. If you don't have the nutrients in, you're not getting enough healthy fat, you're going to crave potato chips and ice cream. If you're not getting enough carbs, you're gonna crave on three or four o'clock at nighttime. You're gonna start craving um, candy because your body needs carbohydrates, and you're gonna, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna need carb. Your brain actually not your body, your brain. Your brain needs carbohydrates, and if you're not getting those carbs in, those healthy carbs throughout the day, especially if you're not eating the, the Ezekiel bread, the um, the um, still cut oatmeal, the sweet potatoes, the brown rice, your body's gonna crave carbs. And the main thing is you're gonna start craving like. But on a regular basis, you're going to start wanting candy. You're going to want turkey bacon. I'm joking, Monica. <laughs> I'm messing with you, Monica. <laughs> you're going to want bacon. You're going to want all the other stuff that your body's not getting. This is your body's not getting. So thank you. You're very welcome, um, Brandy. Any other questions? Thank you. Yeah. I what are your favorite oh, sorry. I was going to ask. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, like, thanks, sorry, Miss Pauline. What's some of your favorite fruits? I, I know you said high water high water content yes high water content fruit so pretty much i eat all fruits i eat, i'm in the grocery aisle you'll see me when i go to uh, trader joe's people i'm they, i'm always in that section so i'm in there literally just raid the fruit house my whole basket is filled with like vegetables and fruits and everything so i eat i eat everything you know for me um my main ones and I, I'm, I'm a southern boy i love my watermelon you know so um my melons I eat literally almost a me too. Every, every other day. So you should see me, you know. So I follow right now somewhat of a different protocol than what most people would follow. Um, there's a book out there written by um, Harvey Diamond. It's, um, it's called, what we always say every day in the class, Fit for Life. That's the name of the book. It's written by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond. And they talk a lot about uh, food combinations, um, quote unquote, Long time ago, before this intermittent fasting concept came out, it's a you know it's a form of fasting, but a little bit different than what most people would would do. I don't believe in not eating before at all before twelve o'clock, you know, because once again you're going through your body is in a fasting state, but if you don't eat before twelve, your metabolism does this. You no, know? now that does have benefits from an aging perspective. 
It does have benefits, many benefits from an aging, slowing down the aging process. But from a fitness perspective and from a muscle gaining perspective, it has, it's detrimental. So I always, for me, I like to have lots of high water content fruit up until 12 o'clock. So I'm still eating on the schedule. I eat within the first hour, a piece of fruit. I eat fruit after class. And for me, most days, if I'm not, if I'm not training, if I'm training, training, then I may need something a little bit more on my stomach. Um, but I'll have mostly fruit up until 12, you know, still every three or four hours. I, and I don't count how much. I just eat. You know, I eat and um, until I'm full. You know, I eat lots of high water because I'm always in the restaurant. Oh my God, you can go there. It runs through you so fast. So I eat it all, you know, strawberries, you know, uh, watermelon, you know, uh, mango, apples, grapes, everything. I just, everything. And then around 11 o'clock, if I'm still hungry and I feel like the high water content fruit is not enough for me, then I have myself one or two bananas. That's a little bit thicker because high water content fruit takes about 20 minutes to, to for your body to assimilate. Bananas takes about 45 minutes. And then for lunch, I have myself a nice big salad, you know, uh, tons of vegetables on there, beans. Then I'll throw some protein on there, you know, some protein on for the, you know, with the salad, you know, everything, onions, everything on there. And I always try to make sure I go for typically a vinegar, a vinegar based type dressing. Or I may have a, a, an Italian dressing as a light organic Italian dressing. And every now and then I may get a light organic honey mustard. Um, Cause honey mustard, light organic honey mustard dressing is only about 90 calories per, per serving. Um, but the problem we have a lot of times is that we get these, these dressings. Prime example, if you go to Chick-fil-A and you get that Cobb salad, no bacon, no Monica, <laughs> I'm messing with you. If you get that Cobb salad and you look at that, um, that avocado lime dressing they have, that's 360 calories per package. And that's a tremendous amount of, of um, calories that you want to have. Now, I don't like to count calories, but that's where a lot of times we make the mistake that sometimes we have these hidden, these food, these hidden calories in it, you know. Or if you get a ranch dressing, a ranch dressing sometimes, you're looking at 480, 500 calories per serving, you know, or per package. And that's about one-fourth of your, that's about, that's about half your day or at least one-fourth of your day in calories that you're taking in just in that packet, not even including the meal, you know, not including the meal. So I have my salad, then in the middle of the day, I come back and I'll have um, some nuts with, you know, fruit or something like that, or I have my Ezekiel bread with some whole, you know, some um, peanut butter, things like that. And then my dinner, I'll have a traditional meal. That's, that's something I like to have when I'm going through a cleansing phase. So from, from time to time, I like to go through a cleansing phase for my body. But once again, I eat all, all kinds of fruit, everything. And lots of berries too, definitely lots of berries because you need to get those antioxidants in. So what question, what other questions you all have for me? So Clarence, um, so as, as you talk about the salad dressing, I was, I, I was remembering we watched this um, nutritionist who, um, but he's not really a nutritionist. He was like maybe 400 and something pounds and he mm. lost over 200 pounds. And one of the things he shared with us that when we do salad dressing, we tend to just pour it on and not mm. pay attention. And he mm -hmm. said, if you really look at your salad dressing, you only require two tablespoons of salad dressing on your, on your salad. And mm -hmm. it worked. And so I started doing that. And I started paying attention to that. And now I go for the two tablespoons on my salad. And it's not completely drenched. It's not over. And I'm getting that requirement that they say that we need in order to make our salad good. So that's something that I'm just throwing out there for people to pay attention to that. But Clarence, what yeah. I wanted to ask you is, you talk about peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And we always hear, oh, peanut butter is so high in fat and da 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 Is there a particular type of peanut butter that we need to be looking at that is, is better, better for us or the regular Jiffy is good or the Skippy is good? Does it matter? So um, I'm glad you said that. Thank you very much for sharing that. Um, for that. So, so Yes, peanut butter is high in fat, but it's high in natural and good fat. So one of these That's days, y'all gonna get my name right. It's Pauline. My fault, Pauline. You know what it is? I can't see who actually who it is because it went to my phone, so I can't see who's talking. So please forgive me, Donna. Um, so yes, peanut butter is high in fat. But see, that's the thing. It's good fat and it's bad fat. You know, it's good in healthy fat and it's high in healthy fat. So you do need, you, you want your peanut butter. 
I say, go for it, you know? Um, you don't, you know, like they say, a carb is a carb or sugar is a sugar. That's not true. Don't, the sugar from a donut is not the same as sugar from an apple, you know? Don't let anybody confuse you with that, you know? Have your apples. Have quite a few apples a day, you know? Have your peanut butter. Now, you don't want to go overboard. Now, you don't want to go over there and you just, you got this huge, thick, mound of peanut butter on your, on your, on your sandwich or on your, 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 your toast, but you do want your, your healthy fat. Healthy fat is critical. And that's one of the things that a lot of people are actually missing in their diet is healthy fat. If you find that you actually start eating more healthy fat, you'll find that your joints feel a lot better. You'll find, that you'll find a huge difference in how your joints start to feel by eating and taking in more healthy fat. You know, so I, you know, you know, a lot of you all don't know this. I had a major injury back in 2016. I had total knee reconstruction on my right knee. I had an accident where I stepped up on the bench. And most of y'all don't even know this, actually. I injured myself in uh, November on the day Donald Trump got elected, matter of fact. <laughs> the same day, right? So I ruptured my knee, my kneecap, and see how severe it was. My kneecap was sitting on top of my thigh, you know. So they had to really literally rebuild my entire knee my right knee. And they told me I would be out for a long period of time. I wouldn't be able to do a lot of things I'm doing now. I came back within two to three months. Thank God for that blessing. But thank God because of, of eating healthy and taking good care of myself and things of that nature. My body regenerated really fast, faster than, than what they think. They said they probably maybe seen for most people. But I would have a lot of joint problems. And with my left knee, I'm, I'm bone on bone on my left knee. I mean, I'm really close to not having a lot of college on my left knee. My right knee is the one that I injured. And I, um, I would have a lot of arthritis, arthritic type issues at my age and the type of all the wear and tear I put on my joints and playing these crazy sports when I was younger. Um, but a large reason why I don't have all that inflammation and all that pain is because I always make sure I take in adequate amounts of healthy fat on a regular basis. And healthy fat has a way of actually lubricating your joints. It helps your joints to feel a lot better. So I highly recommend to people is one of the best things you can ever do is to take in your healthy fat and not try and don't try to use oil as your healthy fat because taking in too much oil, olive oil is actually detrimental for you. Olive oil, the natural form of olive oil should come from olives, not the salty olives that we, we buy in the little jars. You want that fresh olive. That's where your healthy fat comes from if you're doing olives, but taking in your nuts, if you're not allergic to nuts or seeds, I highly recommend that you do that. And if you can't do that, then you can also take in chia seeds and also uh, avocado. You know, chia seeds are great soil, great way. A lot of people realize this. Take your chia seeds, put them in your shake. You don't even taste it. It's in there, but now you're taking in healthy fat. You're taking in healthy fat in a, in a sneaky way and not even realize you're taking it in if you put it into your shakes. So, Definitely take in your peanut butter. But Jiffy, now granted, now going back to the brands. Now, yes, Jiffy, a lot of these uh, uh, brands that we buy, they're so high in preservatives that they're not necessarily the best sources for you. So you, ideally, you want to try and um, maybe go to a Whole Foods. I go to a store here in, in my area called Dawson's. Um, I typically try to buy organic uh, peanut butter if I can. I try to buy organic as much as I possibly can. But of course, sometimes you can't find it all the time. And Prices can be pretty high a lot of times, but you want to try your best to go try to go organic as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. But peanut butter is, is good for you if you're not allergic to nuts. Be careful too. Some of you all might be allergic to hazelnuts and not necessarily peanuts. And if you buy Nutella, watch that. Nutella is hazelnuts and it's not necessarily peanuts. It's, you know, that's something you got to be careful of if you're not if you're allergic to nuts. Okay, so go ahead. Claire, What's the next question? Clarence, what about almond butter? Oh, almond butter is great. Almond butter is great. It's actually, I like, that's actually one of the things I like that I use a lot more of as opposed to peanuts. That's what I use for my, that's what I used to use for my son. My son used to be allergic to peanuts, but he wasn't allergic to almonds. So we gave him almond butter instead of peanuts, but he grew out of his peanut allergy. So now he's allergic to hazelnuts, pistachios, and, and that's another one I forgot, which we, I stay away from most nuts anyway. But almond butter is actually really good. Almond butter is pretty good. Clarence, so yeah. I heard you said that um, we should eat something before we work out. What yes. are some of the recommendations? That, like, should we eat like a banana? Uh, because we, you know, our workout is high energy, high impact, mm -hmm. brutal workouts. Mm 
So <laughs> yes. Thank so you. we need no we need and it's early. <laughs> yes. And so I, I'm just trying to think of what what can we eat a slice of bread? What? Give us some recommendations. So because you know when we get up, we're not thinking about eating. We just thinking about getting ready and go. And right. so um now I like I bring my protein shake with me and I drink that after I work out, but before, because I hear you're saying that we should eat something before. So what are some things that we could just quickly grab and go that does doesn't load us down and would give us that energy that we could, you know, work out? Great question. Thank you for asking. So as I said before, the best thing you can have is fruit. The best fruit on the planet Earth is fruit. Fruit. Fruit, fruit, any kind of fruit that you want to have, but preferably something that's easy on your digestive system, all right? Something that's easy on your digestive system. So one of the main things I always have, I, I just grab is a banana, because I can eat a banana, you know, while I'm walking to my car, while my car's warming up, a banana. The banana is the best thing you can have. So the first thing you should always have when you first wake up is, a, is a one or two cups of water. So what I typically always try to do is I put a cup of, a one or two, I put a, a tall glass of water on my nightstand. As soon as my alarm goes off, I wake up, I drink my water. That's the first, and it's room temperature, all right? Then I have my banana. So I usually make a cup of coffee. I eat my banana as I'm making my coffee, or I'll grab my banana and bring it with me. That's easy. You know, you ain't got to be trying to grab something, looking at something while you're driving. Try to have that banana first thing in the morning, preferably before you even get in your car or while your car is warming up. So that way it, it'll be in your system real good. Bananas and everything is fast energy, and it assimilates into your body pretty quickly. Uh, high water content fruit, even more so, like grapes, melons, things like that, that go through your system. They assimilate into your body extremely fast, and it gives you immediate energy. You know, but a banana is a safe way to go. It's easy. Now, protein shakes. As I mentioned to you all before, a vitamin, a protein is a supplement. Uh, it's an added supplement. But you never want to use it as a meal replacement. You want to look at it like a supplement, like a vitamin. That's really what you're doing. So if you're going to have the protein shake and to kill two birds with one stone, make your shake the night before. Make, your, make, a, make a real smooth, make a smoothie. So this way now, technically, you, you just have breakfast. If you make a smoothie and you have it in your refrigerator, all you got to do is shake it up, bring it with you to class. It's just sitting in your car. So after class, that's your breakfast. So don't look at it. You know what? Let me back it up. Don't look at it as breakfast. Look at it as a, a pre-workout meal and an after-workout meal. Okay. That's how we're going to look at it. We're looking at a pre-workout meal, after-workout meal, okay? And that actually will get you started. But what you'll do is that when you have it, add in all your vegetables, you know, your, your, your fruits and your vegetables. So nice handful of spinach. Not, you know, spinach is one of the best things you can possibly have. You know, it's one of the best sources of food you can, you can possibly have. So if I was you, I would put spinach in almost everything, you know, everything, spinach. Mm -hmm. So put your spinach in there, uh, put all your fruit in there, your pineapple, your strawberries, use almond milk. That's another sneaky way mm -hmm. to get in some healthy fat. No sugar added almond milk because, you know, when you're adding too much sugar into your diet, what you're going to learn about when you read the book, you got to be extremely careful when you start reading these labels, how much sugar you're having into your food. So when you start eating, you don't want to, when you look at a label, you never want more than five grams of sugar per serving. For anything that you eat, add the sugar. No more than nine grams of sugar per meal. So never more than nine grams of sugar per meal. No more than five grams per serving. All right? And it's very important that you eat in this way that I'm telling you all five days in a row. You have to eat really clean five days in a row because if you don't, your body goes through a system. It takes a long time to cleanse that stuff out of your system. And your body's not actually burning fat as, as a source of energy as much. It's burning off those chemicals that come off that sugar, those toxins that come off that sugar that your body's producing. So it's really important that you actually eat clean five days in a row. And if you do that, you can actually have a couple of treat meals on the weekends. A lot of people don't realize this. If you're training the way we train four days a week, you're eating clean throughout the week, you can enjoy one or two treat meals on the weekend, not treat days. Treat meals, <laughs> treat meals. No more than 1,500 calories per bacon. treat meal. Per I can have that, that means I can have a turkey bacon. No, I'm just, I'm totally, I'm <laughs> You know what, exactly, as long as it's organic. <laughs> so 
You're going to do that. So fruit, fruit is easy. And then bring your shake with you. So a lot of times, I don't know if Keisha's on here right now. Keisha is in the class, and you all have seen Keisha in, a, in quite a few things. Keisha left already. I've been knowing Keisha actually since we was in college at Howard. We came in in, 18, in 1988. I mean, we old folks, guys, right? so we get old. We, uh, I've been knowing Keisha since 1988 when we both came in Howard and freshmen. And I've been training Keisha for the past 12 years now, I think. And she looks absolutely amazing. She just turned 50 and looks phenomenal, you know. And she's been eating the way I'm telling you all now for a very long time, for a very long time. And one of the main things she always does right after class, she'll have that shake, you know, that healthy shake, that fruit, you know, the vegetables, all those kind of things. So I'm actually going to post her success story, more of a testimonial this week, along with her pictures. Um, she just did a wedding the other day in New Jersey, and her family was just blown away how she was twice their age. And she, had, she looked like a teenager. You know, she looks absolutely amazing. And it goes back to what I was, I was saying to you before, you know, eating before class, having that shake after class and eating on a schedule every three to four hours. Getting in that sleep. Keisha getting so much sleep that she's been late to class every day for, for, for 12 years. <laughs> Ty Warner was saying, Keisha come to class late every day for 12 years. <laughs> so have that shake. So have that fruit. Um, Pauline, have that fruit. Um, have that shake right after class. Let's say you don't have a shake. Have the fruit again, you know, have the fruit again. And then you can make up the difference on that next meal. You know, let's say you want to come back home, you want to have some little bit more filling. You know, at nine o'clock, you want to have your oatmeal, you know. Uh, still cut oatmeal takes a little longer to make. So I have a tendency not to make it as much anymore, as much as I usually make it, it takes a long time to make. And then a fast, quick oatmeal has really no nutrients in it. Don't let them lie to you about what's in those packages. It really has no nutrients in it at all. And then your body actually assimilates it like sugar because it is so ground up. Your body's assim assimilating it the same as taking in table sugar, you know, table sugar. So um, you gotta be real careful with some of these quick meals, quick this, quick that, quick this. It's quick for a reason, you know, and then your body takes it in immediately as sugar, okay? So a great, a great way to go if you're a protein eater, if you're a meat eater, have yourself some scrambled egg whites with some spinach in the morning. That's a great way to go. If you got time, take in your um, still cut oatmeal. Just learn how to make it. Take some practice. When you add the sweetness to it, be careful with adding a whole bunch of honey and all this other extra stuff into it. It's better for you to use, I would recommend, stevia, something like that. You know, it takes a minute. If you're not used to taking it stevia, you're going to have to get used to that, that change, that transition, because our bodies, we're so addicted to the taste of sugar. We're so addicted to sugar and salt and fat, that we start taking in natural foods that it doesn't taste right to us a lot of times. It tastes weird. Um, so you have to give yourself time to get acclimated to it. So what I did for my son was, when I first got him to take in more natural foods like that, which is oatmeal, I would add in a little bit more sugar, less sugar than we used to, used to take in, but I would give him half and half, half stevia, half sugar. Now he doesn't use sugar in his oatmeal at all anymore, but I add in a lot of fruit. I got my blueberries in there, my bananas, my almond milk, you know, that's, that's our regular staple that we have, you know, um, boiled egg whites that he has. So now he's, he's more and more used to it. Now I'm eating even less stevia now. So now instead of taking in three teaspoons of stevia, now he's doing two teaspoons of stevia. So I, I approach this the same way as you would a child, is that don't try to go from A to Z right away. Work towards that gradually. And then on top of that, make a little quick point. When you all are taking out some of these bad foods in your, in your plan, before you take the bad things out, first bring in the healthy things first. You have to support your foundation, you know. The reason why we have a lot of cravings a lot of times when we go through these diets and we, when we seesaw, we take all the bad things out, which gives us energy now. You have some energy in it, and we forget to put the healthy things in to support that foundation. So if you were actually uh, putting a new foundation in the house, you wouldn't take the old foundation out before you put something else underneath, like a car. You jack that, take that old tire off. You got to put that jack under it first to support the car. Then you take the bad tire off, and then you put the new tire on. So when you, before you start taking bad things out of your diet, I always tell people this. For the first two weeks, put the good things in first. 
And the good thing about that is that if you start to put the good things in, you won't crave the bad things anymore. Because now the reason why you crave the bad things is because you're not getting in all the micronutrients and all the mac macronutrients, which makes you crave unhealthy sources of food. That's where all cravings come from. It's not having enough nutrients, not to have enough mac micronutrients, most importantly, and then macronutrients. We focus too much on macros, which are your proteins, your fats, and your carbs. And we don't focus enough on your micronutrients, which are your vitamin A, vitamin D, your minerals, sodium, things like that, magnesium, manganese, um, all those things, niacin, all those things we need in our diet. Okay? So what's the next question? I have one. So I I'm, I'm, I like egg, egg whites also. But then also, too, any recommendations for what we can do with the yolk besides put it in our hair? <laughs> <We're not laughs> wasting hair. food. So we're not wasting food. <laughs> That's a good question, Jamal Monica. That's a good question. So, uh, no. <laughs> do you eat your egg yolk? Do you eat oh, your no. egg yolks for anything? No, not really. Um, one, as you uh, go visit a cardiologist. Go visit a cardiologist and you start learning from them. You start realizing what's going on. We're taking in all this animal fat. As I told you, we mentioned to you before, I'm not a vegetarian. I'm not a vegan. Because uh, I, I love to taste the meat. But I re recognize that that meat, is not, that saturated fat, is not good for you at all. Uh, at all. No, I'm you with you, do, but I'm like, what could, what, I was just curious if you use the yolk for anything at all. Can I say something? Um, I, might, I, might, I, might do some, I might do some painting with it. <laughs> I'm um, make some egg salad. Go ahead, Tabu. I was just going to say, I've been eating egg yolk, I mean, egg white now for, for a while. I buy the, uh, the ones in the carton that come from Costco, they're organic. And they're very good. So I don't have to deal with the yolk. Because what I found was my friend, you know, was visiting and she said, what are you going to do with all this yolk? And she just sat there and ate them. I was so ups I was so sad because <laughs> she looks, someone just commented, asked me if she was my mom. And we were the same age. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, Lord. what am I doing? So I stopped doing that. And I would just buy the ones in the carton and freeze them. All you have to remember to do is shake them up real good. You can use them. They're very good. They taste right. And you can do so much with them. I make omelets. I bake. I cook. I do everything with my egg whites. I don't have to deal with the, um, the yolk. yolk. Okay, yes. that's the one I'm concerned. I was like, I don't want to waste the, get the yolk. Okay, good. Costco. Thank you. Costco. Thank you. So we, can't, we can't see Tawu on here, but Tawu, uh, how much weight have you lost, Tawu? Mm, when I came back, I'd lost like 60 pounds eventually. But um, since COVID, I found that I, I've lost 18 more pounds. So you lost 60, so 78 pounds? Yes. Y'all should see I mean, I can wear size amazing. six. Come on, Tawu. <laughs> <laughs> but can I, can I say how, something? Hold, hold on. How, how Absolutely old are you, fantastic. How, how old are you, Tawu? How old are you? 58, 58. I started training Tabu back in 2005 at the Bali, the Bali Tour of Fitness in Wheaton. And oh my God, I used to try and kill you, Tabu. But you're amazing. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Go ahead, Tabu. Go ahead, tell us what you want to say, Dallas. Now, I just wanted to say, can we mention the S word? The one thing that I found that, you know, helped me a lot was cutting down my salt. You've got to yeah. look on the back of that label and you have to see cut the salt down, even the peanut butter. When you buy the mm -hmm. organic, it's possible to buy the one that's not good for you. Mm -hmm. So if you cut down your salt, but it's a gradual thing, like you said, everything is gradual. If you try it, you'll hate it. Just like eating before we come to class in the morning, I used to throw up with the banana. Then I went to, I could take a slice, a bite, you know, and now it doesn't matter. I can eat anything before I come to class in the morning. Because I hear a lot of people complaining and say, I'll throw up. Yes, you will. But by yeah. the end of a month, if you consistently do it, you'll get used to it and your body will change. I'm glad you said that, Tawu. Thank you so much for saying that because that is one of the main things, concerns I always get. I'm going to feel sick if I eat in the morning. It's because you're thinking about eating the way you used to eat. If you eat those heavy foods like that, yes, you will feel real sick. But then um, 
if you're eating naturally, you're not going to feel so bad, but you may feel a little something weird in the beginning because you're not used to it, but your body will adapt to it pretty fast. It'll adapt to it pretty quickly. So I'm glad you said that, Tabo, um, that, that you did that. You didn't, go, you didn't go based on how you felt. You went based on what you know you needed to do to get through that process. So it's no different. So eating in the morning is no different than say a brand new person starting our exercise program. How many times have you all seen beginners come to our class, our class for the first time and get real sick? Have y'all seen that before? You've seen it, right? But they got better over those who came back. <laughs> those who came back, they felt better as they continued to train with us over time. So that's, that's the way, same way you want to make sure you go into when it comes to eating. Don't go based on how you feel. Don't, don't, don't eat based on how you feel. Eat based on your plan, which you know you need to do to perform like an athlete. So you have to get yourself into that, 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 that plan, so to speak, into that new uh, way of thinking. All right. So what's the next? Anybody else got anything to add? But thank you, Tywo. I really yes. appreciate that input. That was great. Yes, Clarence. Um, so I'm, I'm just a weird person, okay? Because um, okay. one of the things that I realized or, you know, my doctor informed me is my, my body tends to retain, retain a lot of calcium. That's why I don't drink a lot of milk. I don't do none of that because it retains calcium, which is really not good for my heart. And one of the things that I find that I was doing, I use a lot of spinach. I was using right. a lot of spinach, but then I realized that spinach also has a lot of calcium. So I cut that way back. Okay. Because, okay. And, and it oh, just has to do with my health issue. So um, what else? I mean, I guess the only other thing I could throw in there other than spinach would be like kale or greens or something to get that. Because I mean, I love spinach, but it's not necessarily good for me. Right. Right, right. Well, that's the main thing. You know, each one of us are different in terms of um, our own natural personal needs. So cow's milk is not good for anybody, anyone. You know, as much as we love milk, I mean, milk and eating uh, ice cream and things like that, cow's milk is not meant for, not for, meant for human consumption at all. So almonds, you know, my son was allergic, was allergic to nuts. You know, he couldn't, he allergic to actually cow's protein, uh, animal protein when we first was uh, born. So he can do a little bit now, which we don't do it anyway, because we just don't have it in our house really. But um, almonds, almonds is a great source of protein. And just do just enough of what your body can actually take in. But the difference between um, plant-based nutrients are very different from um, animal-based nutrients. And then most animal-based nutrients are infused with a whole bunch of other chemicals also which has a different way of our body assimilating those foods differently than plant-based foods. So just cut back, you know, just, just, just make sure that you got enough in to make sure that you're healthy and to make sure your, your levels are right with your doctor and just take in your almonds. Almonds is a, is a great way. Almond milk. If you look on your card, of your almond milk. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but it has a decent amount of calcium. And that's what I do for my son. You know, that's what I'm I allergic I, that's... to almonds, Clarence. Oh, the only man. nut... The only nut on the place on, on the planet of the earth that I can eat, is, which is crazy, is peanuts. That's the only uh, nut I can eat. Everything else, I'm completely allergic to. Well, let me do some research. That's why I said I'm weird. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. But you know, we'll figure it out. We're gonna get there. It's all good. Let me get some questions from uh, some other people. Anybody? Um, uh, oh, let me say this real quick. All right. So, um, if you want to see yourself. Feel better. Now, this goes into muscle building, right? You can't starve yourself if you're an athlete, right? It's really important that you feed your system. If you want to see yourself look better and feel better, it's very important that you do a, a combination of those things I just mentioned before. You got to get that sleep in, right? Wherever you are, sleeping right now, get that extra hour in. It does wonders for you. If you can't get that extra hour in, I remember when I worked in corporate America, I just worked for a company called um, Icon. I did um, business to business, office equipment sales. And I always went to my car for lunch every day. And I would take a nap every day. During lunchtime, I would take another lap in the middle of the day. People thought I was crazy, you know. But I always got that sleep in at night. I made sure I took a nap in the middle of the day. And which is something I do still to this day. I always take naps every day, like a little kid. 
uh, take naps, to try to get that sleep in. Try to make sure that you're getting your sleep in. Try to cut out some of that weekday activity. So that way, you know, cut back on the laundry, you know, washing clothes and everything on the weekend, on the week at night, <laughs> try to on the weekend, so that you can get as much sleep as you possibly can. But try to make sure that you're getting in those adequate amounts of food on a regular basis. You will feel so much better when you're in class. You'll perform better. You'll see your body do things that you didn't even think was possible for you. Even at this age, wherever you are right now, if you're taking in those natural foods and taking in adequate amounts of it, and then start taking in those healthy carbs, you'll see a huge difference, Tim. Huge, huge difference. And don't starve yourself. So, well, give me some uh, questions from anybody else. Anybody got any extra, extra questions at all? Cheryl, Patricia? No one else? Okay. All right, team. So, that's pretty much it, everyone. Um, I appreciate you all coming out, you know. Um, take advantage of this opportunity. So once again, I recommend go to the lifestyle page on the website, lifestyle page on our website. Look at the very first link, CD Fit Meal Plan um, for energy, energy enhancement, fat loss, building muscle, things of that nature. Um, look at the eating the meal template. There. It's, just a, it's really just a, it's a template. But most importantly, most importantly is to, re to read the book by Jackie Warner. I guarantee you, if you read that book, and you study it, it'll give you everything that you need. You will see a major, major difference. There's no need to keep seesawing, lose some fat, gain some fat, lose some fat, gain some fat. If you follow this lifestyle plan, not because it's not just eating. She talks a lot about sleep and sugar and meal time and all those important things. If you follow her recommendations in that book, wherever you are, if you're at 120 pounds, you want to pick up to about 140 pounds, you want to go build some muscle, if you follow her recommendations, you'll do that. If you're at 180 pounds, and you want to get down to 140 pounds and 20% body fat, you'll do that. You'll learn what you need to learn to get you to where you need to be. And then I can help you to be more specific with what you're looking to achieve based on her recommendations in the book. Um, but there's a lot of details in there that I'm not able to just give you just in, in, in a talk that I can have here. It's critical that you read the book. And I, and I, I promise you all, if you do that, you'll see a, a huge, huge difference. Okay? So I thank all of you all for coming out. It was great to see you again. Well, I see all of you all next week. Go to unmute your mic for me. Everybody unmute your mic. <laughs> yeah. Y'all enjoy that workout last week? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, I guess. <laughs> I yes. yes. That's great. That's great. My body so, felt it all last week. I oh, know it did. Mm. I know it did. What was the best part? What you like the most? I heard you all love the truck. Y'all like the truck? Yeah. The truck, like? yes. The yes. truck was great. You yes. love the truck. Yes. So you know we got yes. we got boot camp and yoga this weekend with um with our Biani. We mm -hmm. haven't seen Brianna in a long time, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We'll mm -hmm. have some fun with some ways to do a little fun from there. And then what I'm going to do is um, after this workout, we're going to go to Georgetown for November, I mean for October. So for October, we're going to go to Georgetown, and we're going to do a, two great workouts down there. We're going to have one fun run, which will be a fun run to the National Mall. So we'll do a nice little fun run to the National Mall, hit all the different malls. The uh, the Martin Luther King, MLK Memorial, Veterans Memorial, Lincoln Memorial. How many miles of that is that? Yes. About 15. I'm joking. And <laughs> 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 what's the name of the book? Recommend. Okay. Yeah. So what was that? What was the, you said what's the name of the book? Yeah. Oh, this is why you're fat and how to get thin forever. I'm this looking. I'm getting my order right now. This is why you're Jack, fat. Yeah. This is why you're fat and how to get thin forever by Jackie Warner. Okay. The great thing about that book is that every page you read. It's going to give you gems of information that's going to put you right where you need to be. And I, I, I love that. But I read that book about five times. That's how good it was. And I, mm. I really appreciated her yeah, information. There it is. I really, really appreciated her information. It was just, it really hit home for me because a lot of books out there, it's too, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much fat. It's, it's too, it's too fattish, a lot of fads. And it was hard for me to really assimilate this information to a lot of people um, the right way I wanted them to, um, to really grasp it. Um, she really just hit home. She made it very digestible for you. And then she has a lot of great, uh, if you're still on Brandy, she has a ton of great recipes in the back of the book 
uh, that gives you a lot of great ideas for things you can eat, you know. But she at home, so highly recommend that for you all. Okay? Yeah. And she has it in Kindle for anybody who wants that. Perfect. Oh. I'll order it. Thank you. Thank I, you. I wish they had put on audio. I wish they had put on audio. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies. So have a great weekend. I had took up enough of you all time. And, Thank you. Um, I'll put this, I'll save this and put it on video. So this way you'll, you'll uh, see the information from Dr. Cameron Red Cross. His information will be there also. His Facebook, Instagram, if you want to reach out to him directly. And then uh, Karen also has some other... Thanks, Clarence. Um, and we, we... Thank you. Okay, okay. And we thank she, Karen uh, for bringing up that information. Uh, thank you. Yes. 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 Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much. And she has some other scientists that, that are part of her team that we can possibly even bring on also to give us some other great valuable information on health and how to better take care of ourselves. So hopefully we'll be able to bring them more for the next one. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. Right, sir. Have a great thank you. Thank you. Have, have a good one. Day. Bye bye. Bye. bye.